Hi there, it's Louise here of Timeless Craft Mama, and today I'm sharing a video I've created to show you some Heidi Swap mink machine and product techniques. Now what I've done is, uh, once I unboxed my mink machine, I had a little play around and did some stuff off camera so I could um, just decide what was going to work and what wasn't going to work, and I'm going to show you a couple of those techniques now. So the first thing I did with my rolls of mink um, foil was to cut the ends off the square packaging so that I would have somewhere to store the rolled up rolls. So that's what I've showed you in the video. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, just work with uh, some elements here to show you a couple of things that I've discovered you can do with the mink machine. Now I bought the 6x6, or sorry, the 6 inch mink machine because I hadn't played with it, I'd only seen it used, I didn't know how much use I was actually going to get out of it. So what I've done is I've just bought the 6 inch inch machine to begin with and um, if I decide that I'm using it a lot or, and I really like the product I may upgrade to the 12 inch but what I wanted to really experiment with was could I create elements for a 12 by 12 page only using a 6 inch machine so that's what I'm pretty much going to show you with a couple of these videos now the first thing you've seen me do is to apply some modelling paste, just plain old ordinary modelling paste, through a stencil onto a piece of 6 inch paper. Now I've set that aside to dry and I'm going to show you a couple of extra little tricks that I've got um, for minking some um, products that everybody will have in their stash. Now these letters I had, um, you know, uh, I quite liked them when I bought them, but they really just don't fit in with an album or a page that I'm working on at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mink over the top of the letters. Now I'm putting them on tissue paper first because I'm going to cut around them once they've been minked. And I'm applying some of the reactive paint quite liberally to those letters. And again, when you're using the paint, you have to let it dry. So you can't just whack it on, put some foil over the top, and then put it through the mink machine. You really do have to let it dry. So I am going to come back to all of these that you're seeing me do um, and uh, set aside. I'm going to come back to those and show you the final product. So what I've done with this particular product is um, I have cut these flowers from my Cricut machine, and I'm just painting some of the reactive paint onto the outside of that flower because you saw me I showed you the folded up flower so you actually just sort of roll it onto itself um, and um, it gives this beautiful golden hue to it as well so I'm going to pop that painted and dried flower through the machine and while that's going through the machine I'm just going to get these um, letters ready to go through as well and then I'll show you what comes out with these final products. Now, I was uh, a bit worried about how uh, some of these elements would respond through the machine, but I was really actually quite impressed. You know, the letters came out, they were not warped, the heat didn't destroy them or anything like that. So, you know, I think it's quite effective. Um, and you can see the final flower that I've got there as well. So that word, love, has been minked and I'm going to go ahead and cut around those letters because um, you can see that the foil is sort of quite loose um, um, around the letters so you, you don't want them to be messy I mean maybe you do maybe you're doing a mixed media layout so you want them to have a little bit of uh, grunge about them but for me I wanted them sort of to be able to be cut out nice and neatly so you can cut them out and you end up with uh, a lovely minked word to use on a layout. Now, this technique that I'm showing you is probably one of my favourites that I've learned from using the mink. And you're going to see why as the video progresses. But I'll show you what I'm doing here. What I've done is I've tried this a couple of different ways. I tried it first of all with um, a spatula. Then I tried it with a paintbrush and what I discovered was that this way with the, the sponge and dabbing it through um, that stencil really provided the best results. So that is again that reactive paint 
and I've used the sponge through the stencil and I've allowed that to dry naturally overnight because I found that the effect was not as good if you sort of let it be touch dry but um, put it through the machine. It just didn't quite work out the way I wanted it. So I did leave it that 24 hours overnight and came back to it. This is also um, with the texture paste one of the really cool things that I've discovered you can do. So where I have stenciled the modelling paste onto the card, I'm now laying the stencil back over the top again and painting the reactive paint. Now this you'll see when it goes through the machine, it gives so much fantastic texture. And you know, I'm not sure if anybody's done um, videos on these particular techniques that I'm going through with you. This is just my experiences with using the Mink Machine. So again, I'm setting that reactive um, paint aside to dry and it's been 24 hours so I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the tissue paper. Now this, this was my idea in thinking about how I could get foil minked products onto a 12 by 12 page. So I'm going to feed that through the machine and I'm going to show you a couple of different um, ways that I've used this. And you know, this may be something that you're interested in, it may not. At this stage I haven't actually done a layout, all I've done is played with the products and put this video together with you so you could have a look at um, some of the things the Mink Machine can do. Now I also like to leave the product just for a couple of seconds to cool down before I start to peel the layers away. But there it is. Can you see it? All right. So that tissue paper and that mink um, paint has given that really great foil look. Now, in my watercolor book here, what I've done is taken the matte gel and I've pasted that tissue paper into the watercolor book. So that would be a way that you could possibly get those six inch uses of the mink into a 12 by 12 layout. Now these are some of the Heidi Swap um, mink paper line products and what I've done is off camera I've just gold minked that triangular shaped one. Now the piece that I'm showing you there is actually just a toner piece that I've had my local copy shop print out for me. So um, what I've done with the reject piece and I'll show you what I'm doing just with this smaller part is with that, that secondary piece of foil. Okay, So you've fed it through your machine once and you've foiled it um, and then you're left with a little bit of gold or whatever colour you're using, so I'm going to use gold in this case. A little bit of gold left on the um, the piece of foil. Putting that onto a black background gives you a second foiled project. So always remember to keep those um, little reject pieces as much as they they seem like they're a waste. They're actually not because with a straight up piece of um, just black toner paper you can actually reuse them and um, get a really funky cool result and I'm going to show you this once this little fella does pop out of the machine for you. So the, you know I've experimented and tried a couple of different things and hopefully um, you know you're excited by the results of some of this mink process because I you know I'm quite excited by what I'm seeing and some of the uses. As I said, I haven't particularly done a layout as such. All I've done is sat and played. And I think that, you know, uh, quite honestly, a lot of the stuff that comes with this um, would be really suitable if you were a pocket scrapper. So, you know, if you really like to, to add pretty elements and, and make your own little title cards for your pocket scrapping, then the Mink Machine is definitely going to give you some fabulous textures and, um, you know, cards to, to go ahead and use. So this is that little reject piece I was telling you about. And you can see that the piece of foil now has no um, unused gold foil left on it. So you're left with the two cute little cards that are going to... Um, really uh, be useful in projects and you haven't wasted any um, product either. So the final thing that I'm showing you is of course this texture paste piece and you, you know you may want it slightly more perfect than what I've done here but it really comes down to a personal preference. I, and I'll show you why I like it, when this comes out of the machine 
I really like the kind of, um, it's not messy, but it's the imperfect look. And I'm just going to turn my machine off there because um, I don't like it sitting there hot while I'm not using it. So as we peel back that piece that's got the texture underneath it, you can see it gives this really cool, it's not quite perfect, but it's got enough texture on it and enough of the foil that you, that you get this really neat effect. And I'm hoping in the next couple of days to make some um, layouts for some of the stuff that I've shown you in this video. So we've got the flowers, we've got the title sheets, we've got the Heidi Swap cards, we've got the tissue paper and the texture paste. So that's my mink review. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Scrapbook Boutique for all your mink supplies. Thanks so much for watching.